there are two kinds of ritual impurities the minor impurity and the major impurity which occurs as a result of janaba haid or nifas to achieve tahara from the minor impurity you only need to renew your wudu ablution whereas in the case of major impurity you need to take a ghusl and ghusl can be taken in two ways a complete ghusl with all the sunnahs of the prophet and a partial or a sufficient ghusl which means only doing what is obligatory to free yourself from the ritual impurity so what are these obligatory acts of ghusl a beforehand niyyah intention that you are taking this bath to purify yourself from the major ritual impurity rinsing your mouth and nose and letting water run over your entire body at least once make sure it reaches every part of it even your scalp under the thick hair if you manage to do this much then you have purified yourself from the major ritual impurity as for the complete ghusl and this is the mustahab one and it is how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took a bath and this is how you do it begin with an intention to purify yourself from the major impurity then say bismillah wash your hands three times then with your left hand wash your private parts and anywhere else that is contaminated with traces of impurity then make a complete wudu just as you would for prayers then pour water over your head three times rubbing and making sure that it thoroughly reaches your scalp some scholars said three times means once on the right next on the left and then in the center and then pour water and wash the entire body beginning with the right side then the left while rubbing it with your hands so that you are sure you haven't missed any part so these are the etiquettes of the complete ghusl ghusl essentially means letting water run over every part of your body so if you are wearing a ring you should move it and if it is so tight that the water won't reach the skin underneath then you have to remove it cosmetic items which form a barrier and prevent the water from reaching your skin must also be taken off in a narration of maimuna radiyallahu ta'ala anha it is mentioned that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam moved away from the spot where he had been taking ghusl and then he washed his feet it's a pretty important part of your religion because if you are not ritually pure you cannot perform some important religious deeds is wetting the hair enough for ghusl no only wetting the hair is not enough the water has to reach your scalp this is obligatory for men and women because allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said tahta kulli sha'ratin janaba under every strand of hair there is janaba so if your hair is thick you should make sure the water reaches the roots Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha narrates that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to take water in his hands and with his fingers he made sure the water has reached the scalp and then he would pour water over his head three times. Can we take ghusl with hair tied up? Yes, you can. Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave permission to Umm Salama radiyallahu ta'ala anha when she asked, O oh, messenger of Allah, Do I have to undo my braids when I take ghusl from Janaba? He sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied, "It is enough if you pour water on your head 3 times. That will make you clean." So it is not obligatory to undo your hair every time, but you should make sure the water reaches your scalp. In fact, Sheikh Ibn Al-Uthaymin rahimahullah writes that she should make sure water reaches every strand by placing the braid under the water spout and squeezing it. and this permission is only for ghusl after janaba and not after menstruation as ghusl after menstruation this is only once and it is not difficult for you to undo your hair for it whereas janaba is more frequent 
and thus easiness is prescribed. Can we use soap and shampoo during ghusl? Yes, you can. There is absolutely nothing wrong with using shampoo and soap while taking ghusl. Hair must be rinsed over three times, but shampoo is not easily washed off in those three. What can I do? This is what you can do. First, take a normal bath to cleanse yourself with soap and shampoo. And then take a ghusl with plain water in accordance with the sunnah to wash away the ritual impurity. In the past, women used to wipe their private parts with musk. What is the role of musk here? And will soap suffice today? The aim here is to ward off unpleasant odors and to perfume the site. It's interesting to know that a study showed musk as a natural antibiotic against genital diseases, funguses and yeasts. Disease-causing bacteria increase in number during the menstrual period, and so it is beneficial to use musk after menstruation. If musk is not available, you may use whatever perfume you can find. If no perfume is available, then it is recommended to use whatever will remove the odor. If you cannot find any of these, then water is sufficient. But if perfume is available and you still don't use it, then it is makro. I feel too shy to take a ghusl early morning after janaba. Yes, that can happen, especially if you are a newlywed or living in a joint family. I do understand. But my dear sister, shyness is not an excuse if you are going to miss an obligatory salat. What you can do is wake up just a little early than others or take a very quick ghusl. I'd say three to four minutes should be enough. Do only the obligatory parts. Say bismillah. Rinse your mouth and nose and pour water over your entire body. Don't undo your hair. Keep the water noise low. Perhaps don't use a shower, use a bucket. Dry the top hair, tie your hijab and back to your room. Nobody will suspect.